So, uh, horror of horrors, uh, Chris just uttered a heavy swear. Uh, yeah, this is a... Well, not really. He, he, he uh, as you can, he say, he says, "Holy sh," and and, and then it, and then it's cut off by uh, by by Aura Channel Chris's sneaky transition to somewhere else entirely. Where is it, you ask? It is uh, a, a threed graveyard underground. So I, I guess this is where we meet the legendary Ness and Paula. Let's let's continue. <clears throat> Uh, down below the graveyard of the spooky city of Threed, two children were sitting down on the cold ground as they awaited the arrival of the friend they had contacted with using telepathy. Since the door that held them captive was tightly locked, and pretty hard to burn down and destroy to boot, there was almost no hope for them to escape on their own unless, unless Jeff arrived from Winters. Paula, this is insane, said the boy wearing a red cap. You should have contacted somebody closer to where we are. Impossible, said the girl sitting beside him. The rest of the population I tried to get into was all protected through Gygus's influence warding off my powers. The closest friend I told you about happened to be all the way to winners. What about the fourth? She shook her head. No use. I couldn't detect our fourth friend at all. It's like he's hidden away somewhere remote. Like across the globe? My powers do have a limit, Ness. Oh, yeah. The boy was an Onetian. And on, Onet, I think, okay, I, I'm guessing that's a place. Onet. Uh, the boy was an Onetian that had started a very surreal adventure to record eight different melodies that were spread across Eagle Land so that then he and his band of three friends could confront Gygus. He only has three friends. <laughs> Lonely fuck. That was mean, I apologize. Uh, he wore red shoes, shorts, and a blue and yellow striped shirt, stripped shirt, oh man, carrying a small backpack and a red cap on top of his short black hair. It was the first smasher, it was the first smasher, or soon-to-be veteran smasher, named Ness. Although he had quite a docile look, there was an infinite amount of potential within him t due to his adeptness to psi, PSI. Uh, I mean... Does it mean psi like pounds per square inch, or does it mean like Gangnam Style? I suppose it's anybody's guess. I mean, okay. Um, uh, I suppose it's anybody's guess, really. Well, anybody that hasn't played the game, at least, like me, uh, that he hadn't fully developed yet. Speaking of haven't played the game, Gygus. I mean, I I know he's like the the big bad, uh, and I know that he's like a red fetus horrific screaming face thing in his final form at least but I mean like um wh what the fuck is he the the, the the story's done a really bad job of explaining what the fuck a Gygus is like I, I I'm sure the game gives a perfectly valid explanation but this isn't the fucking game this is a story and we don't know who the fuck he Next to him was a young blonde girl originating from Tucson who wore a bright pink dress with red shoes and a medium-sized red ribbon behind her head. She was the second chosen one to accompany Ness in his adventure, along with Juff and the fourth friend. Her full name was Paula Polestar. Uh, just like Ness, Paula possessed strong psi abilities that might even surpass his own. She was more like a teacher to him, but it only looked like that on a few occasions. Ugh. That Juff guy better come here soon, or we're gonna die of star starvation, and probably become zombies, Ness complained. Paula sighed. I really don't think he'll arrive today, or tomorrow, or the day after. Then we'll have to make do with what we have now, Ness said, taking out from his backpack two sandwiches. Master White! Sorry, <laughs> just my, my accent I thought was a bit Alfredy from, uh, you know, Dark Knight films. Uh, he handed a sandwich, he handed one to her. We have four sandwiches after these ones. Maybe we could eat one in another seven hours. Bad idea, Paula said. Let's eat whenever we feel really hungry, but not just hungry. Ness had enough. This does it, he complained. Paula stared at him. We're just eleven. We're not supposed to be fighting real-life zombies, he stayed quiet. 
Oh my god, we're fighting real life zombies. Ness, calm down, Paula said, trying to stay sane. I know, the fact we got dragged into, into this mess because destiny says so is pretty surreal, but there's nothing we can do to object. If it makes you feel any better, we're the only children capable of burning monsters with our minds. That's great and all, sulked Ness. But that can only happen if there are monsters nearby. Clearly, I see no monsters anywhere in this stinky hellhole. Hell hole. He smacked his face on his palms, sighing in defeat. Uh, now our only hope is with some guy we never met before, which, <laughs> with some guy we never met before, who almost literally lives across the entire country. Paula looked away, embracing her knees. Well, he's another chosen one, she said. If he's special like us, there's a good chance we'll get out of this just fine. Ness rolled his eyes. Only if he could fly all the way to Threed, he replied. Three, but what are the chances of that? Slim to none. The Onet boy grumbled and tried to suppress the hunger that was starting to well up in his stomach. It was times like this that Ness wondered why he was a chosen one to defeat a mysterious entity that wanted to destroy the world with ne 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 with negative emotions. Okay, so at least we at least we kind of know what it is now. Gygus, I mean. Why was Destiny so cruel? He was just a boy who was suddenly granted psychic powers. But then, why did it feel like he had them from the very beginning? Any chance that Juff guy is at least bringing some backup? Preferably zombie busters? Paula shrugged. None too impossible. What a stupid question, Sir Ness thought. Oh yeah, the universe hates us. It was all Ness could say. Winters. New song. Who cares? The universe clearly hates me, whined Chris with an even younger voice. How in the hell could I have expected this to happen to me? I'm screwed. He grabbed his head and frowned. What will my parents say when they see me like this? I, I can't go to high school anymore if I look like an 11-year-old. I'm facing a terrible early age crisis. <laughs> I love this voice more than I love myself. I'm facing a terrible early age crisis here. My neighbors probably don't. Lucario really wanted to bring the good side of things, like for example the fact Chris would need his services even more than before. However, it was greatly discouraged to bring up the fact that Chris was close to a midget. Wow, that's a, that's cruel. Instead, the large blue dog sighed. Oh. I'll try to find some kind of solution for this, Chris, he said, not sure if he could even find said solution. The quartet was now exiting the brick road, leaving it with behind their backs as they walked down a snowy path leading into another cave. They met up with the designer of the brick road, the aptly named Brick Road, who only cared more about the challenge's creation what? than to see he just put children... What? Okay, they met up with the designer of the Brick Road, the aptly named Brick Road, who only cared more about the challenge his creation than to see that he just put children and their companions through the whole thing. That is, that is a malformed sentence. Never mind. Uh, he's a dick, basically. After finding out his road was defeated by them, he congratulated their efforts and let them continue. Seconds later, he did go back inside his cave to scream at the path of destruction Lucario left in his path, though nobody heard him at all. With Chris having been de-aged, there was a lot of complaints coming from him that it seemed like no one else would hear the end of it. There was great relief knowing that his clothes had shrunk along with his body. No way was he walking in large clothing around in the cold area. Coughing, Jeff's, Jeff, oh, fuck, Jeff said, This is a strange event indeed, but if you accidentally got younger by that curious machine, I suppose there is something you that can return you to your older self. Chris sniffed, grabbing Lucario's faraway hand with one hand. I want to find that solution immediately, he yelled. I can't live like this. The elderly would really find this super awesome, but not me. I have so many things going on with my life that I can't be seen like this. I thought you said that the two of you were travelers. I don't really have time to read this next uh, paragraph, so I'll just I'll just call it to a halt now. Um. Uh. Um. 